Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Direct to patient marketing in the digital age. My name is Sarah and I'm marketing manager here at Sagittarius and we're hosting today's webinar. Today's presenter is Josh Whiten, digital marketing director here at Sagittarius. Um, the webinar will last around one hour and will consist of around 30 to 40 minutes of webinar and 15 minutes of questions. We'll be taking questions at the end of the 45 minutes, so please type your questions into the questions box within the webinar portal and we will answer these at the end. We'll also share the slides and recording from today's webinar with all the delegates later on this afternoon, if not tomorrow, via email. So without any more delay, I'll hand you over to Josh to start this afternoon's webinar. Thank you, Sarah, and uh, welcome along, everyone. Um, as uh, Sarah mentioned, my name's Josh White and Digital Marketing Director here at Sagittarius. So I'm going to be uh, leading the webinar this afternoon. Um, and uh, just as we were saying, really, it'd be about 35 to 40, 45 minutes of, of webinar um, with some time for questions. In terms of what the webinar is about, obviously, we're talking about direct to patient engagement within the, the healthcare sector. Uh, just so you know you're in the, uh, the right place at the right time. And what we're going to talk about is really how digital channels can be uh, used to help you as an organisational brand communicate more effectively direct to the patient in the health sector. Um, last point, I just want to reassure everyone, you don't have to be a digital expert to uh, follow the content. Um, I'll take it at quite a steady pace um, and obviously we will be sh sharing all of the uh, resources afterwards and all of the content. Um, and I have sort of structured it so that uh, it can be followed by a range of, of different levels. So. Uh, just a little bit more about us, if, you, if you're not already familiar with, uh, with ourselves at Sagittarius, as I already said, I'm Digital Marketing Director here. We're a full service digital agency. Uh, very proud to say we're multi award winning um, and work across a range of sectors. And over the last year or so, we've really been bringing um, our experience to the healthcare vertical specifically. Um, and it's nice that that's been uh, kind of ratified by nominations for various uh, awards for some of our healthcare specific and, and, and related uh, uh, projects and campaigns, which you can see there. Um, in terms of just our approach as an agency, um, I, I'm just going to explain this because it will hopefully understand kind of our approach to this subject that I'm going to talk through in the webinar. We very much try and work with clients to get a top level view of, of the data and digital and what's going on and the channels. But obviously within those conversations we're having, we're always using lots of these buzzwords around being integrated and integrating your channels, multi-channel or even moving to omni-channel, which you may have heard of. We talk a lot about user journeys. Um, as an agency, we do a lot of work on web personalization to customize the online experience for the, um, the online user, uh, which is something we'll touch on towards the end of the webinar as a future opportunity. But overall, Everything we do really is results led. Um, we're very much focused on conversion rates, outcomes um, and results. But enough about us, a little bit about about you. Um, we very much envisaged the target audience for this webinar and some of our future uh, knowledge sharing um, events uh, for people in, in you know one or more of these of these roles of these from these backgrounds and hopefully you'll kind of spot yourself amongst amongst one of these primarily probably you you may well be a mid-level to senior sort of marketing person um you could be from a more of a sales commercial or business development background you may, may be more senior perhaps board level marketing director uh, or sales and marketing director maybe um, looking to really sort of understand the, the, the wider potential for digital um, communication direct to patients. You could even be fairly junior and new to, to this whole subject. You may have moved over from another discipline. Um, you have maybe uh, sort of or in your first role at a more sort of graduate level. But um, in all those cases, we're, we're kind of assuming we're pitching this on the assumption that you're, you're working within a, a healthcare provider, maybe private healthcare. Could be public health looking to sort of communicate um, certain awareness messages, uh, could be in the well-being sector or, or within care. So just to clarify, you know, up front and out at the outset, this is very much who this, this content is, is aimed at. Although there is quite a breadth of topics and hopefully everyone will find something in there to, to sort of take away and, and go and implement within your own organisations. 
Now, whatever your roles are, we because we talk so often with clients, we hear a lot of the same things and, and we do try and put ourselves in in our clients' shoes to try and sort of uh, understand what, what your challenges might be. And these are some of the most common, really. We, we hear so much that people can struggle sometimes just to keep pace with digital techniques and technologies. And linked to that, with the proliferation of digital channels, it's sometimes hard to know which ones should you actually be using, why and how. Um, reporting is another sort of issue that comes up a lot linked to that what sort of results should you expect as we often say what does good look like and you might think that with digital and so much data actually that's the easiest part in terms of certainly measurement is um, but actually you know really measuring and identifying the results is it can be quite difficult because of the wealth of data almost too much data and and analytics can be off put into some people as well um, and that second to last point around, you know, it's a challenge to really understand what's happening in the, in the digital sphere and spot and respond to opportunities for your own brand or organisation. And off the back of that, work out where you're going to allocate your marketing budgets in the future. So these are a lot of the very common sort of issues that we find. They're probably not unique to the healthcare sector. They're probably across a lot of verticals that we, we work within. Um, but again, I think it's just worth reinforcing that to reassure you we do understand the challenges you're facing and uh, sort of the content that we've been working on we'd love to share with you today is, is very much designed to help you with this. So before we sort of get into the, the content in more detail, I just wanted to pick up on some broader sort of uh, trends within the health sector which we've been observing and talking to people about uh, and these are sort of more relevant obviously from the, the digital aspect within when health within healthcare. the first one is something a bit more generic we see a lot across a lot of sectors and that's digi digital channel shift uh, and that's you know shifting uh, the end user away from other channels such as coming in person to see a GP or a, a, a physical face-to-face -face appointment or even telephone-based uh, contact to try and self-serve information or find answers to questions using digital channels. Um, there's another big trend happening now, particularly more uh, sort of uh, um, within the, the public sector around data collection and sharing using digital. There's a, there's a wider trend around the, the journey, the kind of a patient journey from illness to wellness. I'm sure you'll all be very familiar with the, 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 the trend that's kind of exploded in the last few years of, of patients trying to self-diagnose um, using good old Dr. Google. Um, and uh, that's obviously something to be aware of. But the last point I think is one of the most pertinent and relevant to what we're going to talk about today, and that's about being person centred uh, within your communications and, and within your marketing. And that's another very important trend we've been seeing more and more. Just some examples of what I've just run through, you know, NHS Digital on a national level, trying to collate data from lots of various sources using digital channels would be an, an example of one of the things we, we've just spoken about. Uh, and then on conversely, you know, something like my NHS, which is kind of making that data available more to on a wider basis and more accessible and more transparent through digital. Um, you may have something like uh, this is an example of a medical concierge service, which has developed more in the US. You may have heard about these services sort of uh, coming into the UK potentially, um, where it's very much trying to tie up the patient um, through kind of a high end premium service to sort of link them to their healthcare professionals and healthcare providers and share information between them. Um, you know, in quite an interesting way. It's quite a, a new development within within the sector. And then talking about patients, this is a nice example of kind of the, the shift in balance, really, um, towards patients themselves, which is, uh, you know, the heart of what we're talking about today. Uh, ePatient Dave is a nice example of this. Um, his, uh, Dave DeBroncart's uh, TED Talk is, is very well known, um, and he's very much become an advocate for um, you know, the patient leading their own uh, journey into wellness uh, and he's working with many brands in, in the US um, to help them communicate better, therefore, with patients themselves. Um, and that really leads nicely on to this broader topic of patient engagement. Now, we're very aware that there's several different, um, I suppose, interpretations or definitions technically speaking, of patient engagement. For example, 
Um, it could be around empowering patients to make their own health decisions to lead them towards, you know, positive health outcomes. Um, it could be engaging with patients to provide information or assisting with research, research back to healthcare providers, managing healthcare through digital channels, possibly such as apps, sharing health information back with healthcare professionals. We're really talking today about patient engagement in the context of the last bullet point, which is really more around the commercial outcomes. As I said in our introduction, we're a very results-led agency and a lot of the clients we work with are really focusing on this aspect of patient engagement, really looking to um, increase inquiries and conversions via digital channels through engaging with patients. And, and within that, let's look at, you know, the three key areas within this. These are the three key questions we, we, we're trying to answer. Um, if, we, if we call this more digital patient engagement, how can we use digital marketing channels really to, to engage with relevant patients, but at all the different stages of, the, of their journey from illness to wellness? Secondly, how do we um, actually progress patients through that journey? Because it's all very well to talk to people at the different stages, and it's great to adapt your message and your communications and your content to those people at those different stages. But actually, if the end result is some type of inquiry or, or, or contact or conversion, we do need to push people through that, through that funnel, through that journey. And thirdly, with a plethora of digital channels available for us to choose from, which ones, which technologies should we use, platforms, apps, what type of content and what type of marketing channels should be used and when. So this is very much, as I say, at the heart of what, what we're now gonna, gonna run through in, in a bit more detail. Um, why should we care? This is uh, from Smith & Jones, very well-respected medical marketing agency in the US, but I did like this. Um, this quote because this is sort of almost passing the so what test and this is all great in theory about digital patient engagement but really what what's the benefit and this quote is saying that you know those in this case hospitals and, and health systems or we could say healthcare providers but really get the attention of niche audiences and give them the resources to help them make healthier choices will actually outsmart the competition and it for me this is all about creating competitive advantage for your organization, brand or, or hospital, um, rather than the more sort of altruistic approach of just sort of trying to help uh, patients or, or targeting positive health outcomes. So this really does summarize nicely, actually, the commercial opportunity behind this. So let's look now at what I've called I've called it a simple patient journey. Hopefully you agree that this is a fairly simple model. I will talk you through this now um, and just explain what we've put together here. So if you look at this, the dark blue circle in the middle and the top left sort of uh, quadrant there, we're, the initial starting point for the patient is that they are unwell and they want wellness. And then if you imagine they, they move clockwise around this model, they move into a phase of they've become aware that there, there may be ways that their, their, um, their condition or their illness could be uh, helped or even cured. And so therefore, they are, they've moved from maybe suffering in silence to actually wanting to go out and seek advice. Um, and so their awareness raises. As they gain more and more knowledge um, around the options or maybe the cost of what those options may be or cures, um, they may start to become empowered to actually make a decision. And then in the last phase, then they're, they're actually taking the action to get better. Now, this could be in the period after a procedure. So they're making decisions about their lifestyle to sort of uh, improve their longer term health prospects. Um, and uh, there could well be even less a word of mouth aspect as well amongst people that they know. Now, looking outside the circle, you'll see I've um, I've put some uh, some lists of bullet points next to each of these four phases. And these lists of bullet points are really sort of what the marketing person's response could be to each of the different phases of the patient journey. So at top left, really the, the patient is looking for facts and, and how you can help them, how you can provide that is through becoming a source of really trusted content. And then you could surface the content that you're providing 
uh, through, for example, targeting organic search on search engines through SEO, or you could use a, a channel such as native advertising to take your content and get it out to a wider audience. Um, then over through into the next stage of when patients are you know, in the awareness phase and seeking advice, this is where you can possibly influence them um, through this, this research phase. So it might be you're using techniques like paid search or pay-per-click, or you're using display adverts with a more broader sort of message, but targeting those to people who've possibly already engaged with your content earlier on. So you know they've started that journey, but now you need to help push them through. It could be you're integrating um, actually with offline activity because whilst we're talking primarily about digital here, we don't forget about offline. There's still a very valuable role to play, especially within health um, and the opportunity for referral uh, and understanding the impact of referral. Um, but also it could be health events. So those people who've moved into this seeking advice phase, it's an ideal time to invite them to come along to a, a health day or event for their type of um, the type of segment they are or their type of condition to find out more and actually meet people face to face. When they move into the decision making phase and they're starting to feel more empowered, you can help them again from a marketing point of view by helping to provide reassurance. So here we could be using retargeting again, but maybe on social media channels like Facebook ads so that they're seeing your social media presence after they've already started to engage with you. And it provides a reassuring face that you're on social media as well and that you're on Facebook and you're engaging with a variety of people in a very caring and trustworthy and, and trustworthy way that all adds credibility. It could be on a practical way, looking at your website platform and uh, looking at what we call CRO, conversion rate optimization. So if you're trying to increase the number of decisions, you know, how well does your website perform and actually making it easy for them to contact you? It sounds very obvious, but sometimes um, you can raise all the awareness and generate the interest, but you need to let people sort of get in touch with you in a very simple way. You could be uh, looking at reviews of your care provision or your organization and looking at ways to, again, reassure people based on what other people have said about you. And as we've also said, your sort of natural organic social media presence can also do that. And lastly, in the action phase, um, this is, as I say, let's assume this is very much maybe after a procedure or after initial advice has been given and treatment has been provided, then you know, you want this very transparent approach. You're there to help guide and advise your audience with a, a content around changing their lifestyle and changing their habits and practical advice on maybe exercise tips to help with rehabilitation after a certain type of operational procedure. Um, this could be delivered through uh, users subscribing to email advice. Um, so obviously a lot of organizations send email marketing and email newsletters out and sometimes it's in health. It's kind of hard to know how to utilize that channel. But if you're offering advice through the email channel, um, targeted based on different types of audiences or procedures or, or ailments or issues that they've had, that could be a, a good use of that channel. Or it could be you look at an app that users then download that is a nice uh, conduit through which you can be providing support and push notifications and assistance. So hopefully what maybe looks fairly complex, you would now agree, is, is actually a very simple journey, um, as I say, where people move through that circle. Um, from these different phases on the patient journey from, from illness to wellness. And we've illustrated here how you could both use content and channels um, and also just sort of set the tone of your approach at each of those different phases through this simple, um, simple model. Just to follow on from this, now we've sort of got our, our heads around this, let's, let's look at a slightly more complex version. Um, it's, it's essentially building on what I've just talked through, but illustrates perhaps more how you can uh, push people through the journey on your website platform through a more integrated approach. So let's start perhaps with a, you know, if you're marketing trained, you'll probably spot this is very similar to a traditional communication model, but let's take this, this model, this journey of uh, again, the patient being unwell, then through awareness to decision to action initially. 
And then on top of that, let's look at maybe these are the different types of content you could have within your website to link up to patients at these different stages of their journey. So starting from the left, you'd have a factual, trusted content. Um, then you would may, maybe move through content to try and address patient, uh, the, the passive patient and encourage them to sort of look at the issues that they're having. Or maybe you could try and target your content actually to the, the carers or family around the patient. Um, and again, I've broken the awareness phase down into three different types of content because this is quite a could be a potentially fairly lengthy phase and you might need different approaches um, because, because then the patient could be looking at really research around cost of care and other sources of advice and what choices they have. Then they want to sort of look at the benefits of what that procedure is going to be and maybe get that validated by some third party evidence. Um, as we mentioned earlier, that could be reviews. And that leads again into the decision phase. You know, what are the options and implications of not making the decision and not getting the treatment? But again, you want a very open and reassuring approach. And then finally, as we've already talked about in the action phase, it could be around the self-management and encouraging lifestyle change, helping the patient to sort of change their habits or, or plan their recovery, and also supporting the advice they are uh, receiving offline through um, healthcare professionals. So it's a very similar model, but just sort of in a, in a more linear format. And then what I've just added on here are how some examples of how marketing channels digitally could actually push the user, the patient, through this model. So you, you've seen here three different sources could be used, content marketing such as native or paid search or organic search. Uh, the latter two are very reactive to people searching for kind of an upstream search about very early on about their condition or problem. They could lead people into your very trusted content. Now, some people will then leave and some people will move straight on to the next phase. So the people who leave, you could bring them back through remarketing on social media channels. And then at the next stage for people who leave there, you could bring back through remarketing on search. So that's where they've they've developed awareness about what a possible treatment might be um, or a possible type of provider who could help them. And they've gone back to Google search, for example, to search for um, physiotherapists or whatever the, the type of sort of care might be. And that's um, that's very much where you can target your search remarketing to those same people who've looked at the previous content. Again, the people who drop out at that stage, you could get back through remarketing where they're looking for sort of validation, something like video, especially video interviewing previous patients and with a human face. That's really powerful to sort of uh, really explain the benefits of someone who's had this procedure done. Um, then display remarketing, which could just follow the user around more generally with reassuring messages about your about your uh, provision and about your brand. Um, and then towards the end, personalised email, as we've already talked about in social media. So it, this just takes the, the same idea, the same concept and net for this next stage and presents it in a different way, in a more integrated fashion, showing you how digital marketing channels um, can, can really sort of help push the user through these stages. So in summary, the key features of this type of approach, whichever model you adopt or a variation on this that suits your particular audience or market or, or type of sort of healthcare provision, um, there's some common key features. As you've seen, it's very content led. OK, um, it's using content as that quote from Smith and Jones said earlier, it's using content to engage with the patients and build trust to ultimately create competitive advantage. It can be segmented to different niche audiences, and we'll touch on that in a moment. Often it incorporates multiple different digital channels. And this is about the whole idea of synergy and, that you know, there's lots of different touch points. And you may have to repeat uh, the message in slightly different ways over a number of times before uh, that message really sinks in, particularly in this uh, scenario or in this market where, you know, let's face it, your target audience could be heavily distracted. They could be suffering in pain or suffering with a condition. So you really might have to repeat these messages several times for them to really be absorbed. 
Um, but they are consistent, they are integrated, whilst they are adaptive at each stage, there, there's some common strands throughout and they're targeted to each step of the journey. So, you know, in summary, these are the key features of this type of approach. Now, I mentioned segmentation just now, and this is one of the big benefits of digital marketing in most respects. Something like Facebook ads as a channel, for example, you've got, you know, probably a couple of hundred different criteria and combinations, infinite number of combinations you could use to create an audience and target them. Um, and we have worked on campaigns, for example, um, where uh, we, we've based it on sort of almost demographic data provided by the client about these are the most common types of person who would suffer from this condition. So let's target them with our marketing. Um, so it could be very quantitative, but we've also based it on qualitative data based on the second point there. So we did run a campaign for uh, a cosmetic surgery a procedure for varicose veins with, with a client. And the, some of the most valuable research we got to plan that campaign on Facebook ads was actually a lengthy conversation the client set up with the ward manager um, who actually dealt with people coming in day to day and reassured them and spoke to them and knew why they were having the procedure done and could really give us a quick pen portrait of the type of person commonly coming to have this done and what they cared about. That type of data and information really is gold dust um, when you're trying to segment and target your campaigns. But other obvious ways to target, or, you know, geo-targeting a radius around a, a site or location or surgery that, that's being held, um, or, you know, all those users passing through a certain location. It could be by device. Uh, that links very much with the geo-targeting because you tend to find people on the move, but be on a mobile. And lastly, you could target based on your previous history with that person. You know, this is where you could link up data with your um, customer relationship management system, your CRM. And you could talk to people in a different way if they've already been to your hospital and, and you know, they already know your brand or organization. So let's look at an example, uh, which I've chosen because it kind of illustrates um, uh, several things. It illust illustrates the integration of channels. Uh, it illustrates the great results you can achieve, but also it illustrates the uh, segmentation of a campaign. So this was a public health campaign we ran, um, and the aim was to raise awareness of the risks of regular drinking, um, but not amongst sort of, I guess, what you would call the traditional perception of uh, people suffering with alcoholism, but more the people, the, the public, members of the public who are just drinking regularly and it's just creeping up and creeping up and they're unaware of the impact of their health of this regular cumulative uh, drinking. The outcome was to um, get them to come online and, and take up a, an IBA, an identification and brief advice assessment online where they uh, completed, completed a quick survey about their drinking habits and then were shown some videoed advice from a, an alcohol counsellor based on where they fat, fitted within that, uh, within that profile. Um, the key thing though, we targeted segments and behaviours based on national research data and regional data from the, the local authority level around who are the most common groups at risk, um, it, at risk of this type of behaviour. And we were able to target the campaign, therefore, using, for example, Facebook ads or Instagram ads to those particular user groups. And lastly, it was a pure play, digital only approach. This client had used um, uh, traditional offline PR and awareness raising activities, but our challenge was to achieve all of this purely digitally. So I'm gonna try something now. Um, I'm gonna try and play you just a very quick video, um, which hopefully explains the outcomes of the campaign, and hopefully the sound will come through um, okay for you, and I'll play that now. Know Your School was a public health awareness campaign for Kent County Council Local Authority using solely digital media for the very first time. Campaign aims were to get Kent residents who drink alcohol to increase their awareness and understanding of the possible health consequences of regular drinking by getting them to complete an online self-assessment tool and watch an advisory video. The campaign exploited and adapted the engaging look and feel of digital advertising used by alcohol brands to grab the audience's attention using animated cinemagraph adverts.
a combination of digital media channels, including search, display, social media and native ads, were used in an integrated manner to target different audiences. This innovative campaign exceeded all client expectations by delivering large numbers of relevant users to an online test page, who then converted into online test completions at a rate of 17.3%. The campaign also achieved a reach of over 7.6 million impressions and exceeded the results achieved by a previous large-scale offline campaign by 259%, showing a real impact on the residents of Kent. So hopefully that explains... Um some of the benefits of this type of approach and what you really can achieve. And there's some obviously impressive, impressive numbers there, over 250% improvement on the offline campaign, but also an online conversion rate of over 17% when we normally, for inquiries, for example, would see conversion rates of between half a percent and four or five percent. So that's an incredibly high engagement rate that I think is partly down to the segmentation of the campaign using the data to target the really those key audiences and the way the campaign was designed using different channels at different times. So this type of approach, as I say, as well as those sorts of you know hard numbers, there's a, there's a lot of benefits. It, it ties in with this overall trend and theme of being more patient centric. Uh, and by doing so, you can appear to be and actually be more connected with your patients and your audiences. Therefore, that makes you as a brand more relevant, um, but also by investing in this approach with, with content-led digital patient engagement. Um, it's making access to the content more convenient and accessible for, for the patients, for the end users. It's also a much more efficient form of communication uh, compared to maybe some offline um, channels and effectively just speeds up the whole process, which is a benefit to both yourselves and the patient. They're getting access to that information quicker and discovering what their options are and maybe speeding up decisions about care. Um, and, you know, ultimately that's got to be in, in the interests of the patient. There's some secondary benefits as well. We talked earlier on about self-diagnosis and the dangers around that and people consulting Dr. Google. Obviously, if you're investing in, the tr you know, authentic, true, credible content, then um, it can help correct some misconceptions or misunderstandings. You can also use your digital engagement sort of strategy to get feedback from different audiences as well, which can help with planning future care provision. Um, and also the other benefit of this approach is, is, you know, you're investing in this content, but actually it is highly measurable uh, in terms of measuring your impact. You know, that, that video I showed you in terms of the reach and impressions, we we're able to, you know, really sort of specify that sort of information. And uh, that kind of helps you when you're planning your future budgets and understanding the return on investment. Another case study I wanted to share is from a client of ours um, who've been a client. We've worked with them for quite a long time now, uh, Spencer Private Hospitals uh, on a local basis here in Kent, where we're based. Um, and I just wanted to share another example of really the benefits of investing in patient centric content, which this, this organisation have done very, very successfully. So the strategy of working with this client was really to try and expand content around um, all of their surgeries and treatments content within the site. Now, this was for a number of reasons, um, not just to help with the search engine optimization of the site, but also to really position them as a really valuable source of, of help and advice. So we use keyword research around topics um, that users might search for, but not just based on, on sort of what they might search for, but also kind of a layman's term, in terms of certain conditions and also some of the other issues that they might be concerned around. And a really nice example of this was around some types of operations. And we found that people would search for, for example, common recovery times around those operations. So then we worked with the client to draft content in the user's language. Um, we involved internally the consultants and healthcare professionals to make sure that content was accurate. Um, we then got the content on the side and worked to optimize that in, and put it in an appropriate structure to support SEO so it would actually show up in organic search results. And that involved a whole range of things I'm, I'm going to show you now, sub pages and sub menus and internal linking. So this is an example of a section of content that was built out on the client's website around uh, an allergy clinic um, that they were sort of quite unique in, in, in offering. 
Um, and you can see this is the top half of the page, but as we move down the page, you can see it's quite a lot of content in here. We've got on the left here, sub pages around different types of allergies, but you'll see in brackets, we're talking in, in you know, common terms as well as the technical sort of medical terms. And over on the right hand side, we've got really nice related links, which have been sort of thought about intelligently as to sort of what other things people may be interested in. But these questions on the right hand side, how to test for allergies, why use a private allergy clinic, what is an allergic reaction? These were things that came out of our keyword research. These are things that the audience are also searching about. So rather than just talk about what this client offers and just talk about themselves, they've really invested in talking around the subject as we talk about in SEO. Um, and it had really great results. So let's look at some, some outcomes for this particular ongoing campaign. So for 2016 to date, compared to the previous year, we're seeing an overall a 30% increase in sessions. And I'm sure this client wouldn't mind me saying that overall they're operating with a fairly modest budget. You know, that that's not down to huge high profile marketing campaigns. It's down to this, this content really doing a, a hard job of work for them because we can see, you know, over 46 percent increase in organic search sessions. Online inquiries on the site up 160 percent year on year. Um, but also crucially, I think this last metric, you know, over 70 percent um increase in the number of people returning to the website after initially visiting it. So they really are seeing is it seeing the site as a great source of, of trusted content. Now that all sounds amazing and brilliant on a couple of examples there, but there are challenges with this approach. Um, you know, user journeys, trying to map them I've made them sort of maybe look quite simple and straightforward, but they can actually be complex. I'll show you an example in a moment. And that's because they just have so many different touch points and different moments that you have to be present at and that you have to sort of plan for. It can be an elongated and lengthy process, but also, as we've said, the behavior can be really unpredictable. You know, we're not talking about someone trying to buy something online for e-commerce and it's a fairly straightforward user journey. These are people possibly facing life changing situations and therefore their, their behavior could be more erratic than we may normally expect. On a practical level, this patient led approach does require a lot of work and investment in content and it requires yourself and maybe the budget holders to sort of uh, take a bit of a leap of faith that it's going to pay dividends for you because it's really hard to just show direct immediate return on investment from day one. It's a, it's a longer medium term investment. We talked about these user journeys being complex and this is a diagram we use in a lot of cases and on the top half you see digital touch points but on the bottom section the offline touch points again through a common type of uh, online journey and it just illustrates I, I quite like this because it just shows how people bounce around between these different touch points in lots of different ways there's almost no two journeys you know are, are going to be identical so you have to make the best attempt to try and plan for these and look at the broader phases and, and plan your campaigns around them another key aspect it's sort of we draw as a to draw to a close now on a couple more uh, pieces of content here um, it's important to be relevant, to use the right messages at the right time, but also as we've seen in the case study before, using the patient's language is really important. Another opportunity to sort of make you appear relevant uh, and remain relevant in the future is to tie in with a wider health awareness calendar. Um, and just as an example here of uh, taking January next year as an example, there is always so much going on every month of the year that from a marketing perspective, your activities could be integrated with um, to try and make you relevant and really tap into the wider awareness that these campaigns are designed to create um, and reach those audiences who might start to think about these issues. One of the challenges we talked about at the start of this webinar was around you know, measuring results. What does success look like? What does good look like? And these would be some of the types of KPIs or metrics that we would suggest using. Initially, the reach and visibility, the number of impressions or views of your YouTube video that you've put out there is, is a valid metric to look at. Um, but then the engagement on that. So you might look at the bounce rate of visitors to your content 
the click-through rate, both from paid search and organic search, which from organic you can get that data from Google Search Console, for example. You'd look at engagement in time on site and also measure the repeat visits, as I did earlier with that case study to look at the increase in people returning to the site. I think that's a good measure of engagement. And then finally, you know, going back to the harder sort of uh, conversion goals, online inquiries, inbound phone calls, uh, event signups, whatever your sort of calls to action might be. Obviously, that is an obvious thing to, to be measuring. Looking to the future and how this type of approach could, could be developed even further, there are wider opportunities. As I mentioned, we do a lot of work in the, in the personalization space as an agency, um, partly being a, a, a Sitecore Gold partner, and Sitecore is a, 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 an online platform that facilitates personalization of web content based on implicit and explicit, explicit cues that the, the user is giving the website based on who they are and what they might be looking for. So there's an obvious opportunity there to customize the type of content that user is being um, shown or is being featured to them based on what we think their conditions or, or, or problems might be. And then to take that personalization to different segments and roll that out across your wider marketing channels. I think there's also opportunities potentially uh, in the future to um, to uh, sort of influence the market through intermediaries, key opinion leaders. Um, it's not possibly strictly speaking healthcare in a true sense, but we're doing a lot of work with the Derma Cosmetics, a French brand selling here in the UK. Um, and we're supporting a lot of work with their PR agency in terms of beauty uh, bloggers and vloggers to um, uh, around skin care to really sort of reach those influences to people who are suffering with those con with those problems and might might need these products. So to recap, there's a growing trend for, for patient centric marketing, but I think all healthcare brands need to be increasingly aware of um, and can be realistically exploited through relevant content and relevant communication. But I think you need to pin all of this within an integrated patient journey um, that follows this model of sort of a, the discovery of, of illness through um, to research and then decision making and action. It does require investment, but the results really can be significant. And I'm just going to leave you with a, an example of that which is a very nice quotation around the alcohol awareness public health campaign that we ran. As we've seen, it, it got a, a great improvement versus offline. And our client said, the success of this project has opened our eyes to the power of digital only campaigns. Public health is a remit to deliver population level interventions. And this campaign has really helped us meet the challenge of reaching a large audience with limited spend whilst providing excellent data and insights into our target audience, which I think is a really great way to, to end our content. And, and uh, uh, you know, I couldn't have put it better myself <laughs> uh, in terms of some, some of the benefits that can be achieved from this approach and an integrated approach. So um, that concludes our, our content for today. Um, I'm just going to check now and see if any no, questions have come through. No, we haven't had any questions. No, Josh. We, um, if you do have a question now, then please type it into the questions box. We've got just over five minutes left. Um, I haven't had any questions whilst the webinar goes on. Um, but if you don't have a question now, um, then do feel free to email it to myself um, or Josh after the event. Um, and we will do our best to answer those. Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, we are here and very happy to speak to you further uh, if you have questions arising from the content we've shared. Um, because you've signed up for the web webinar, obviously, we will be sharing back with you the, the content we've talked about today. So you can sit back and review this, uh, the information at your leisure. Uh, and as I say, if that triggers further questions, then absolutely you'll, you will have our contact details with that content. And please do get, feel free to get in contact. So. I'll, um, I'll wrap up now um, by thanking you for your attention and joining us this afternoon. I really do hope you found that useful. Um, it was a really fascinating exercise to pull the content together to share with you. Um, and uh, we look forward to you joining us again soon at one of our uh, knowledge sharing events. Thank you very much.